Close your eyes and watch your breath. When it comes in, know it's coming in. When it goes out, know that it's going out. Notice where you feel the breathing process in the body. It's more than just the air coming in and out of the lungs. It's the movement of energy as the chest rises, the stomach rises, and falls. You get really sensitive to the body and begin to realize the entire body is involved in the breathing process. But for the time being, focus on the parts that are most obvious. And ask yourself if they're comfortable. Do you feel refreshed by the way you breathe? Try a couple, try a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths and see if that feels more refreshing. Or you can change the breath in any way at all that you want. The important thing is to give the mind a good place to settle down, a sense of well-being, a sense of ease, refreshment here in the present moment. Because you want to be able to watch your mind. Because the whole point of the practice is, is to see how you're creating unnecessary suffering for yourself and how you can stop. And it's the mind doing this in the present moment. It's just that you don't see it very well. There are many layers in the mind. So you have to get really, really quiet and be very observant in order to see what's going on. You begin to see ways in which you think about things and perceive things and your intentions that are going to color how you see the world, how you hear the world, smell, taste, touch, think about the world. Those are the things you want to look for. And they're happening here in the present moment, which is why we focus on the breath, because there's no way you can focus on a future breath or a past breath. When you're with the breath, you're in the present. You're in the right spot to watch what's going on. It used to be they used to wonder whether Buddhism was a religion. Well, that was because the people who were studying comparative religion started out with religions that had gods, and then Buddhism, especially early Buddhism, did not have a god. It was a big question. But think about it the other way. Suppose some Buddhists had decided to start comparative religion. Their question would be, how does this religion teach true happiness, what you can do to find true happiness? Because from the point of view of Buddha, that's what it's all about. How you can put it into suffering and find true happiness. And the good thing about true happiness is that it doesn't place any burdens on anybody else. It's not a selfish quest to find true happiness. If you do it right, if you do it with wisdom, if you do it with heedfulness, because you begin to realize if your if true happiness is going to last, it can't depend on the suffering of others, otherwise it's not going to last. They're going to do what they can to put an end to it, so you've got to find a way of looking for happiness, finding happiness that doesn't place any burden on anybody else. So this is not a selfish quest. And as the Buddha said, if you pursue this issue really far, you can. it takes you much farther than you can imagine in seeing what's going on in the mind, what things are possible to experience. So you start with something simple like this, the breath coming and going out, and then you just get deeper and deeper and deeper into what's going on right here, sorting out what's skillful, what's not skillful, and what's going on. And you can test for yourself that way, whether what the Buddha taught was true, that it is possible through human effort to find true happiness. A happiness that doesn't change, a happiness that's not subject to conditions. But to see that, you have to look carefully inside. And this is how you start. 